I'm gonna take you to the time that I found out that I wasn't in love anymore with my wife. It was a hard day. I'm tied up to my bed because I've kept on pulling my feeding tubes out of my mouth. And uh, my wife came up to me and said, you know what? Life is gonna change now. We're not gonna fight each other anymore. We're gonna love each other. God has opened up my eyes and I'm gonna stop playing games with you. And um, we're gonna live happy ever after. But to me, I had a stroke and to me, God was telling me that you're not gonna waste your life anymore. It's time for you to actually live your life and stop trying to hoard this woman to be part of your life when you're not really compatible with her. So I had this in my mind. I'm tied up to the bed now, and I'm looking at this woman, and I don't know how to explain this to her. My whole entire life, I've never been honest with anybody. Now I have to be honest. I have to be completely honest with this woman, tell her that, yes, I survived the stroke, but I can't be with you anymore. We have two children. One was 11, the other one was 10. And I have to explain to each and every one of them that I'm not coming home with you guys. My ex-wife, I'm looking at her. I've known her since we was in high school. I'm 46 now. And my stroke happened when I was 41. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, you're getting older. You really don't want to be with me. Now I had a stroke, you have to take care of me. You've been a caregiver for our children all of our lives, all of their lives, and now you have to go and support our family. I used to be the breadwinner. I can't make the money like I used to make before. I have a half a million dollars worth of medical bills. And now you're going to be obligated to take care of me and these bills. I didn't want that for her. But I had to let her go. That's how much love I had for her. I had a conversation with God, and I asked God to save my life for my children. I want to teach them more things. But I was disappointed with God because I said, I'm going to die without falling in love. I never know what true love meant. So I had to make a decision. I had to move forward, tell my ex-wife that we're not going to be with each other anymore, leave out my house, lose my health insurance, because federally you can't get permanent disability until you are disabled for two years. So for a year and a half, I didn't have any health insurance. I had to be, basically be homeless, living off people's couches as a stroke survivor, give up my house, give up my rental property, give up my cars, my ability to work. And I actually had to be compassionate enough to love a person, even though she hates me at this particular time because I'm leaving her. All this while I'm trying to get my faculties back together. Before my stroke, we used to fight each and every day and never get any resolution. And always thinking to myself, well, tomorrow's going to be better. Next week's going to be better. We're going to have a better life. But it never happened. So once I have my stroke, I'm looking at this woman. I'm like, I don't like this woman anymore. And I don't want to live my life with this woman anymore because of all the bad things that she did to me because we thought tomorrow would be a better day. So the people that don't have brain trauma, just imagine if you're having these issues with your significant others and then all of a sudden brain trauma comes into play, trust is going to be out the window for that brain survivor. So there's no need to be fighting with your significant other. So it's time for love. And if you don't love that person, let them go. So they can live their life. You don't want them to be on their deathbed, tied to the, to the bed like I was, and regretting that they've been with a person they didn't love. And then they die. Who wants that? Nobody wants that. So I had to think about that for her. And also my children, I had to make sure that my daughters understood that even if you don't like each other, you can still be nice and compassionate to another person. 
So I don't want my children to grow up and say, well, this is a functional ho household. You're supposed to argue with your mate each and every day, and that is functionally love. I didn't want that, so I had to leave. So what I'm leaving with you guys is this. When I had my stroke, I was looking around, talking with God, thinking I was going to die. Wow. That's God. God's talking now. <laughs> so I thought I was going to die. But when I had those thoughts, nothing negative was in my mind. Jealousy wasn't there. Anger was not there. Death was welcoming. It was comforting. So I said to myself, if I survive this, I will not live my life with negative energy. So I challenge you, if you do have that negative energy within yourself, what is it for? Why do you need it? Get rid of it. Live your life. Find love. I thought I would never find love, but I found love. I find people, I find people like you, people like myself, and now I know what true love is. That's what you need to do within your lives. Fighting doesn't do anything for you, but hold you back from the next goal that you're supposed to have. So I thank you guys. I really appreciate you guys listening to me. If you have any questions, let me know. What, what? When you, um... Free. Like the saying, the truth will set you free. When you have things inside of you and you know that's not right and you lie to somebody, it hurts you. It breaks you down. That's how I was feeling. I was feeling broken down. I felt stress, hypertension, high blood pressure. But once I actually told her her truth, my truth, I felt free. She can't be mad at me for being truthful. I can lie to her. But I don't want to see her old and gray on her deathbed with regrets. That's a great question because. Hold on, hold on. My wife and I go. Well, it's actually perfect because that's a song of what is love. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I were great actors. Everybody thought that we had a great relationship. We was putting her on a show. And when it actually happened, they didn't think it was because of the stroke. Just everything became to the forefront. All the lies, all the deceit was apparent now. So no more hiding. Without that transition, that thought process, I would be stuck in the same place I was before when I just started. <coughs> when I was stuck in the hospital, restrained to the bed. Actually, a funny thing, I, I, I was telling somebody about this a little bit earlier about children, how children help you with your recovery. I was very fortunate with my recovery because I was very dark. I was in a dark place. I was living off of my cousins and my sister's houses on their couches. And all of a sudden, one day, my grandniece barged into my room and said, Uncle Gregory, get up. She's like one years old. She's telling me, get up. I'm like, no, I don't want to get up. I'm depressed. I'm sad. But her energy was so pure. She didn't understand depression. Only thing she understood that Uncle Gregory wasn't playing with me. So once I started seeing things like that, it started really opening up my eyes to being truthful to myself, being in a place without any trauma, back trauma, that's when I started to live. So, so, so as opposed to a burden, it was a weight off your shoulders. Absolutely. Okay. I used to make over six figures. Now I make probably about 20000 a year, and I'm happy. It's the happiest I've ever been in my life. I hear that. It happens. It happens. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.